Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Zax with Meta Endurance. We're here on the track testing two shoes thanks to our sponsor Stride. We have the Go 17 and the Hyperion Elite 5, two Brooks shoes. The question is, do you need a carbon plated shoe? Do you need a super shoe in your rotation? We'll check the numbers and we'll debrief in the studio right after the run. Stride is the company providing with this part. This is the Stride part and it allows us to collect a lot of data to compare shoes. And that's what we're doing today between two Brooks shoes. One is the, say, entry level. There's a cheaper Brooks shoe than this one, but this is the entry level of performance shoes at Brooks. This is the Brooks Ghost 17, a reliable daily trainer. And we're comparing it against the top of the line Brooks Hyperion Elite 5, a carbon plated uh, distance racing shoe the uh, pinnacle of what Brooks does when it comes to um, race day shoes. Why do we compare the two shoes? You might be wondering, uh, simply because we realized that we were doing lots of comparisons between carbon shoes. And that's very nice because it allows you to uh, understand which carbon shoe is better for you on race day, which one performs best, what are the differences um, when it comes to my running. But we were wondering here in the office, is there any real difference between a non-plated shoe and a carbon plated shoe? Um, we'll figure it out. I'm not going to go through the specs of the two shoes. The idea here is really to compare uh, the numbers that we gather with the stride pods. Uh, there's one shoe, like I said, that is a reliable daily trainer. It's actually a good daily trainer. And the other one is a race day shoe with a carbon fiber plate and a DNA gold midsole, meaning a PIBA midsole. This is the latest generation midsole from Brooks. And that's what matters. We uh, put the shoes to the test. I ran two by two kilometers in uh, each shoe. So two kilometers in this one, two kilometers in this one at the same power output around my half marathon power output. And then I did a second test, which was 800 meters uh, in this shoe and 800 meters in this one. So in uh, order, it was 2K, 2K, 800, 800. You may be wondering why I did 800 at the end, and I will explain this here in a second to all of you. Uh, but first of all, let's check the numbers of the 2000 meters in each of the two shoes. What you see on your screen is the stride power center. I ran with the two shoes at the same power output, 332 watts. That's what you see right here on the power line. This is the baseline number that uh, we need to hit. We need to hit similar numbers for the two shoes in order to compare the rest of the metrics. Now, uh, what you see here on the left-hand side in the footpath analysis uh, section, you have uh, my right foot in blue, my left foot in orange. In solid, you have the ghost. In dash line, you have the uh, Hyperion Elite 5. I think interestingly, what you can see here uh, is that the Hyperion Elite 5 seems to be offering a more uh, condensed um, running style because I'm not going as, as far uh, out as I'm going with the Go 17, meaning that my uh, form is a bit more condensed laterally. I'm not uh, spreading my legs as much. That's the view from the rear. If we look at the view from the side, it feels like the two shoes have a very similar uh, pattern. The, the backswing is also the same height, at least it looks like it. Um, in the front, it feels like I'm uh, kind of throwing my leg a bit further up and further in distance horizontally with the Go 17. My left leg is definitely working a bit differently than my right leg, but that's also due to uh, the surface and the course I ran, which was a track. And I think leaning towards the left on the track uh, also creates a bit of imbalance. Now, looking at the other metrics, you may be wondering which shoe uh, ran um, the fastest split over two kilometers. And uh, the surprise here is that it was the Go 17. I ran 7.09, so 3.35 minutes per kilometer pace in the Go 17, and uh, 7.12, so 3.36 minutes per kilometer pace in the Hyperion Elite 5. This comes a bit as a surprise. And I was the first one to be surprised on the track because I thought, well, the Hyperion 5 will be faster no matter what. However, and this um, is where I think it's interesting to compare uh, numbers and we'll show you more numbers because one of them actually gives uh, the edge to the Hyperion 5 when it comes to long distance racing. It's also interesting to compare subjective feeling. And I had an RPE, rate of perceived exertion, in the Go 17 of about six out of 10 when I was more in a four and a half, five out of 10 in the Hyperion Elite 5. One reason for that is that with the Go 17, I was carrying more weight on my, on my feet. The weight of the Go 17, the full system with a stride pod is uh, 325 grams in my size US 11, when the Hyperion Elite 5 comes at 232 grams in my size US 11. Meaning that 95 grams difference for each feet, 
a total combined of 190 grams on the two feet uh, over seven minutes doesn't make a huge difference, uh, but the rate of perceived exertion uh, was definitely different and was felt easier uh, at, the, at the same power output in the Hyperion Elite 5. The other difference, again, very subjective, and it doesn't really show here on the footpath comparison. Um, I felt like I was running different in the two shoes, meaning that I wasn't worrying too much about my foot strike in this shoe simply because it's very compliant, very soft, and one of the metrics shows it. Um, when the Go 17 is a bit firmer and I was kind of paying a bit more attention to my foot strike and to um, the way I was running in the shoe, simply because it's not necessarily meant for speed, although it, it's fast, um, but also because I'm not doing much speed work in shoes like that and in the Go 17 in particular. Now, if we could quickly compare other metrics, um, the cadence is the same in the two shoes, 174 steps per minute. Uh, heart rate is not relevant because I was not wearing my heart rate strap. I'm sorry for that. I will wear it for the next video, which will be a crazy video with stride because it will be relevant to compare also the heart rate for that upcoming video. But for this one, it's irrelevant, like I said. Ground contact time, so the time spent on the ground is the same with the two shoes. Um, almost the same, one millisecond difference, 196, 195 milliseconds. Uh, leg spring stiffness, so the uh, ability of your leg to store energy just like a rubber band and then uh, release it. Same with the two shoes, no difference, 10 um, kilonewtons per meter in the two shoes. Vertical oscillation, also very, very similar. Uh, a bit less vertical oscillation fractionally with the Go 17, 839 centimeters of vertical oscillation at each step against 840 centimeters in the shoe. But there is one metric that is really interesting here, and that's the impact loading rate. That's essentially the load that you are putting on your feet, on your legs, on your body as a whole system um, at each step, at each second. And that is defined uh, by the number that you see right here, impact loading rate. With the Go 17, we're looking at 82. With the uh, Hyperion Elite 5, we're looking at 73. And that's a big difference. That's more than 10% difference between the two shoes, meaning that uh, the Hyperion Elite 5, just like I felt subjectively, is saving my legs uh, compared to the Go 17. And I think that's really where this test comes to its limits. Um, if I were to do a 5K, 10K time trial in the two shoes, one after the other, ideally even ABBA or ABAB, that would be impossible because 5K or 10K time trial, you know, multiplied by four starts to be quite some kilometers. Not impossible, but not necessarily the wisest test to do right now with my um, fitness level and goals. I think the Hyperion Elite would become faster over time simply because I couldn't sustain that pace, that power output with a Go 17 for a longer period of time because it's not saving my legs as much and it's creating much more tissue damage and you know other factors that will limit your capacity to go longer in terms of time and distance. That's just my, my two cents analysis. This shoe is faster, that's shown by the, by the test. The two 2000 meters were done 10 minutes apart on the track. It was a bit windy, the weather conditions were a bit changing, but I think testing conditions are fairly good for the two shoes. I was warmed up, I did some drills, um, and I would call the two shoes fairly equal, to be honest, given the, the metrics. Yes, there is a th three second difference um, in favor of the, of the Go 17, and that's definitely something, but the, the other metrics are comparable, but one of them shows really how much uh, leg saving effects you can get from a shoe like the Hyperion 5 and all super shoes to be honest with their softer and more compliant foams. Um, it's proven, everyone knows about how much more you can train with super shoes with super trainers because of how much these foams are saving your legs. But this is I think a good um, example thanks to the stride metrics of that. But like I said, there is a twist in this test because they did a second test with the two shoes and that's a all out 800 meters in the two. It wasn't really all out simply because all out would mean, you know, 10 out of 10 RPE. This was probably more of an eight out of 10 RPE, but this is technically what I would call a good 800 uh, meter run. Uh, if I were to do, you know, six by 800 or eight by 800, this is probably the pace I would try to, to hit, or at least the RPE I would try to hit. Because I didn't try to match the power outputs for the two shoes. I didn't try to match the pace for the two shoes. What I tried to match is the all out effort of being around that eight out of 10 RPE with the two shoes. I did that because I felt like the Go 17 would show some limitations in terms of speed, in terms of what it can offer, 
at that pace uh, compared to the Hyperion 5. And I was curious to see if that was just a preconception, a misconception maybe even, or if uh, there was actually something backing that up in terms of metrics. Not much difference when it comes to the footpath. I think um, the one thing here that you can notice is how much more backswing and height in my backswing I have in the Hyperion 5. The footpath analysis also shows if you look at it from the rear, again, a bit of uh, leaning to the left, but I think that's the track and uh, exaggerated with the faster speed. And and also a bit more of a condensed, again, footpath with the uh, Hyperion Elite 5. What's the power output with the two shoes? How high can they go in terms of power outputs? Um, we're looking at 383 watts with the Hyperion Elite 5 versus 358 in the Ghost 17. Now, I did my 800 meter rep in the Ghost 17 after the one in the Hyperion Elite 5, but I took some time to change shoes to rest a bit. I don't think that affected so much the difference in power output in my ability to create power uh, as an output. But nevertheless, there is a 25 uh, watt difference between the two shoes, which is quite a bit. Pace, obviously with a much higher power output, the pace is also much faster with this shoe. We're looking at a 302 minute per kilometer pace uh, for the Hyperion Elite 5, 318, so 16 second difference um, in terms of pace with the Go 17 for a total time of 226 and 239 for that 801 meters uh, distance, which is the same for the two shoes. Uh, but again, let's dive deeper into the numbers. Uh, I created more watts with this shoe, I ran faster with this shoe, fine. Uh, but what else can we see from the numbers? Cadence is uh, actually much faster, uh, much higher, sorry, in the uh, Hyperion 8.5. Uh, I was able to get a faster turnover. I think weight, the weight of the shoe plays a role here. 187 steps per minute versus 183. Again, do not check heart rate because it's irrelevant here. Again, it's coming from my Garmin watch band. And for some reason, I do not get good readings from my watch. So like I said, for the upcoming super shoe comparison, we'll have reliable heart rate data. But then there is uh, more metrics that I think are relevant. Leg sprig stiffness. Uh, if you look at LSS, it's higher in the Go 17. So technically the ability to store energy in my leg and release it is better in the Go 17 than in the Hyperion Elite 5. I feel like the softer foam plays a role here. Um, the softer the foam, I feel the more the shoe is absorbing energy and releasing it um, and not necessarily your leg working uh, as much. Whereas here with a stiffer foam, it's um, my leg that was absorbing and releasing that energy a bit more, if that makes sense. So the shoe kind of compensating for your leg with the Hyperion 5. With much more watts, 25 watts extra, I have an impact loading rate of 89 with this shoe instead of 93 with the Go 17. So technically what this means is that again, at faster paces, on top of the inability of the Go 17 to sustain a higher power output and a faster pace, it also creates more loads, more damage on your legs compared to the Hyperion 5 that went much higher in watts, much faster in pace, but still saves my legs more than the Go 17. And that's quite fascinating, meaning that if you were to do, you know, a 5K race, you would run faster in the Hyperion 5, most likely because you can produce a higher power output thanks to the lighter weight, thanks to the properties, the geometry of the shoe, which is also more suited to faster paces. Um, but it would still save your legs more than a daily trainer. And that's where I think, you know, all the benefits of modern foams, modern geometries, carbon plates to a certain extent to stabilize the whole system are uh, relevant. One thing that is not here in the metrics is uh, the feelings I had with the two shoes at that 800, 8 out of 10 RPE uh, pace. The Go 17 felt super heavy, super clunky. I didn't feel good running that 800 in the Go 17, simply because it's not meant for that. And I could really feel it so badly. I think I never ran this fast in the Go 17, and I will probably never run this fast again in the Go 17. It's a great daily trainer, for faster paces. I'm transitioning to a shoe like this. This was really fun, really nimble, really agile. Uh, the geometry really made me forget about the shoe. I wasn't worried about the way I was stepping on my feet. I was just pushing, uh, flying, and I would wear this shoe for a you know, 5K, 10K race for sure. For longer distances, maybe as well, but that's irrelevant. The message here, I think, is even if data metrics can be close, and that's all the magic of stride pods, you can compare everything. Sometimes some of the numbers are even better with one of the shoes. But at the end of the day, you need to check in the fine details uh, the metrics that are relevant for your uh, usage, for your uh, needs. And if it comes to race day, 
I'm definitely going for the Hyperion Elite 5, even if the Go 17 did well in the two tests to a certain extent, and even uh, better in the first one, the 2000 meters. I hope you enjoyed this comparison. I hope this was relevant for you. Stay tuned because the next video that we have on the channel sponsored by Stride is gonna be a roundup of six carbon plated shoes of 2025. Maybe we'll see this one again. We'll see some more exciting shoes, Vaporfly, Ideas Pro, uh, maybe Saucony Endorphin Elites, Rocket X3, you name it. Give me uh, your six top shoes of 2025 that you would like me to compare in the comments and we will do that for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride. Go beyond your limits and I'll see you in the next one.